unit circle, uh, we've already talked about a little bit. It has the formula x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. And we know that this location is 1, 0. We know that this location is 1. 0, 1. We know that this location is. We know this location is. Now, we have already talked as well about terminal points, haven't we? Meaning this point right here has an x, y coordinate, correct? And so as I make this triangle, it has an x value, it has a y value. Somebody tell me, what is the r value? Y. Radius is 1, and that's a unit circle. Very good. Now, I want you to know that we've already done this terminal point thing, haven't we? We've located x and y. It used to be that I would teach that along with the rest of this in one day, because that's how the book has it set up. So what I've tried to do is prepare us so that we don't have too much at once. We've already seen the terminal points piece, and now we're going to add the simple piece together with it. Okay? Sign is spelled S-I-N-E, and this is theta. We talked about theta before, correct? The shorthand way that we write it is this, sine of theta. Don't say sin, say sine of theta. That's the language we use in mathematics. And sine of theta is a special ratio, and it is equal to whatever the y value is divided by the r value. In the unit circle, what is the r value? So in the unit circle, it is simply just equal to 1. Cosine, shorthand for cosine, is C-O-X. Please do not say cos. Hi! Come on in! Don't say cos, don't say cos, say cosine, okay? And that would be your x value divided by r, which is, because the radius is 1, is just your x value in the unit circle. The only one I'll give you a break on is tangent. Sometimes we do say tan, okay? But you should say tangent. Say tan, I won't scream it because I even do it every once in a while. And tangent is equal to your y value divided by your x value. And in the unit circle, we really can't change that, okay? But I can do this. Watch this. Kiss me. What is y equal to that we already wrote down? Sine, right? Y is sine. Over, so tangent is the same as sine over cosine. Then we have the reciprocal functions. Once you know these three, the rest are easy. Cosecant, CSC, that's cosecant, is the reciprocal of sine. So it would be r over y, or 1 over y. Secant would be SEC, secant of theta. Secant of theta would be r over x, or 1 over x. Again, it's the reciprocal of cosine. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, C-O-T of theta, cotangent of theta. And that would be x over y, or cosine over sine. Does it look to you like we kind of just made stuff up a little bit? We just said, oh, we'll make up something called sine and give it the ratio. 
kind of seems odd, right, that we just did that. The fact is it should seem odd because we these are definitions. So it's not as though we proved them or anything. We just decided that that's what it's going to be. Now, can I share with you just a short story about why it's kind of neat? Okay. So uh, back in ancient times, they would use trigonometry in order to determine things like, say, the distance uh, of the of the Earth from the moon. And they would use all sorts of angles. And here's one thing that's kind of interesting. Remember a chord in geometry? A chord stretches from one side of the circle to the other side of the circle. Okay? And sine, if we would look at an angle, sine is the y value divided by the r value, which would be 1. So this y value would be half a chord, right? So in Greek, they gave it a name, and the name meant half of a chord. And they would use that all the time to figure out certain things about distance and everything else. But here's the problem. When they translated it from Greek to Arabic, um, they came up with a different name. And then they came from Arabic, they tried to translate it from half chord into Latin, and they mistranslated it. They gave it a name. Instead of calling it half chord, they called it nasal. <laughs> what, what, what's, um, what is the word we use to represent sinus? They gave it the word sinus. It was very similar to the word for half chord. I don't know what that was. It was very similar. And uh, so literally when we say sine, it, it means a nasal pass. Kind of one of the mistakes that happen over time, but that's just kind of the deal. You might say, what does sign mean? I'll be like, what if you just clean your nose, dude? Uh, but uh, it, it's, it's supposed to mean half of a chord. That's what it's supposed to mean. Okay? That's just, yeah, I wrote a paper on that. Um, the history of the sine function. Well, it was really good. All right, so let's do this. Calculate the exact values of the six trigonometric functions for the given value of theta. This is a big question, and we have to be excellent at this, folks. Here's the process. We first identify the terminal point. Pi over 6, how many degrees? 30 degrees. What's my radius? 1. How do I get the smaller side? Do I have 1 half over here? What do I do to the smaller side to get the longer side? So I have to go to 3 over 2. So who can tell me what the location of that terminal point is? So we practiced terminal points the other day in class, and you got to a point where you said, hey, I think I could do this now, right? So that's the first step. You can see that if I would have shown people this step, uh, all in one, they would be like, holy cow, I'm really confused. But now we know how to do that, right? So here's the new part. Sine of pi over 6. Cosine of pi over 6. Tangent of pi over 6. And you know what? We're just going to do those three today. We're not going to do all six. Okay? We're just going to do three. Change my mind. Which value is sine? Is it the x value or the y value? So the exact value of sine of pi over 6 is 1 over 2. Cosine of pi over 6, is that the x value or the y value? x square root of 3 over 2. And tangent? I do y divided by x. So the y value is 1 half, and I divide that by the square root of 3 over 2. 
Oh no, I have a fraction over a fraction. What should I do? By the reciprocal. What happened? Two cancel. And I get one over the square root of three. Oh no, I have a square root of three in the denominator. Multiply the top and bottom by the square root of three. And we get square root of three over three. We'll do all six later, right? Now I just want to focus on sine, cosine, and tangent, okay? Got that? So, did you already know how to find the terminal point? Yes. Um, you just then identify those three, okay? Let's do another one. Let's do, let's change this one up a little bit. Whoa, what happened? Oh, come on back. You can do it. Let's do instead of pi over 4, let's do theta is equal to negative 5 pi over 4. Negative 5 pi over 4, how many degrees is that? How many 45s is it? Five of the 45s, right? Pi over 4 is 45, so it's 5 of the 45. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Looks like it's right here. Negative 225 degrees, which is no terminal with 135 degrees. So what special triangle do I get? 45, 45, 90. Again, you could have multiplied it by uh, 180 and divide by pi, and you, you would have figured that same piece out, okay? So, I have 45, 45, 90. What is the length of the radius? 1. How do I get from the radius to the other side? Divide by the root of 2. So, you get 1 over the root of 2. Oh, no, I can't have a root of 2 in the denominator. Multiply the top and bottom by the root of 2, you get the root of 2 over 2. 45, 45, 90 is special because the sides are going to be the same. It's an isosceles right triangle. So, what is the x value? Will it be positive or negative? Negative. Of course, you're asked this question every day. That makes sense, right? X value negative, Y value positive. Okay, all right. Okay, yeah, like we're graphing 12, same type of thing. Very good, very good, yep. Okay, so there's my coordinate. So what I do is I write sine of theta, cosine of theta, and tangent of theta. We're just going to do three. We're not going to worry about the reciprocals. Not yet. Assign the x value or the y value. So I have the square root of 2 over 2. Cosine x value or y value. x, so negative root of 2 over 2. And tangent. Yep, I have to take y and divide by x. So square root of 2 over 2 divided by negative root of 2 over 2. Multiply by the, what happens? And the square root of 2 cancel out, leaving you with just negative 1. Let's go to your calculator. If you don't have one, watch me. I'll show you why having a calculator in class is so extremely important. What I 
going to do is, I don't remember what I've showed you guys before, but go into mode, and do you see how you have radians and degrees? Have I shown you guys that before? Okay. All right. So if you know how to convert your calculator back and forth, great. We'll do that at a different time. You can watch me right now. But five, I'll do the first one, the pi over six one. That's in radian. So watch what I'll do. I'll actually press sign up, and I'll type in pi divided by six. And for your first example, what did we say for sine of pi over six degrees? We'll do cosine of pi divided by six. So what do we say you get? Well, if I take the square root of three divided by two, whoops. We'll do tangent of pi divided by 6, and you can see you get that value, which should be the square root of 3 divided by 3. Now, that's impressive, because if I change things a little bit, for example, if I ask, if I go into mode, and I go into degrees, and pi over 6 is the same as 30, so sine of 30 should also give me that 0.5 in this calculus. But watch, if I change it just a little bit, sine of 31, I don't know what that is off the top of my head. Like, I have no idea. You could ask me the sine of 48. I'll make a guess. I, I'm going to give you my best guess right now. You ready? 0.7834. Not too bad, but I <laughs> it wasn't, you know, I'm right to the first decimal place and that's it. I have no idea. We're figuring out exact values, which is quite impressive. How your calculator actually figures out those values is very, very, very involved. It involves calculus and a, and, a, and a movie called Rain Man. And we can talk about that later, but I just want you to show what's actually happening on your calculator. Let's go to two examples that are really easy, and then I'll give you your assignment, okay? We're going to look at theta is equal to pi over 2. What angle is pi over 2. 90 degrees. Do I have to make a triangle or do you know the terminal point of 90 degrees? What is the terminal point? So sine will be 1. Cosine will be tangent of pi over 2 is going to be 1 divided by 0. You can't have 0 in the denominator. What word do we use for that? Undefined. Let's switch it up. Let's go theta equal to 0. Do I have to make a triangle for theta equal to 0? What is the location of 0? 1, 0. What's the sine of? What's the sine of 0? 0. What's the cosine of 0? What's the tangent of 0? be 0 divided by 1, which is 0. If 0 is in the denominator, it's undefined. It's just the numerator of the cube. So see four examples? Do those seem like ones that we're capable of doing now? Because we already know the terminal point. Now all we need to do is we need to identify sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay? We're going to do one more together. 2 pi over 3. pi over 3. Anybody remember how many degrees that is? 120. I would multiply by 180 and divide by pi. I'll write it out this time just in case you're forgetting. What happens to the pies? Cancel. 
180 divided by 3 is 60 times 2 is 120. So I have a 120 degree angle. I'm looking for that terminal point. How many degrees are left over? So a 60, 30, 90 triangle, very good. Which is the shorter side, the horizontal side or the vertical side? The horizontal because it's across the 30 degree angle. So what is it? And I multiply by the root of 3 to get the other side. So what is my terminal point, just like a horse? Negative 1 half. Now that I have my terminal point, I will identify sine of 2 pi over 3, cosine of 2 pi over 3, and tangent of 2 pi over 3. You should put that in there. Yep. So what's the sine going to be? Root of 3 over 2. Cosine? x value, negative one half, and how do I do tangent? Yep, I take the y value and I divide it by the x value. How do I divide two fractions? Two, two cancel, I get negative root of three. So when I told you initially that you had to be able to do terminal points on your test, this is actually what I mean. For the final exam for third quarter, that you have to be able to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of these various angles. So what you're practicing today is actually the very first part of your final exam. Okay? Uh, it's critical we get this. So we hand out the worksheet. Tomorrow, uh, we try uh, these other examples. Okay? So you're going to get a decent amount of time to work today.